Hello, mate. Hello, Jeff. That's um, yeah. That's not a thoroughly enthusiastic hello. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of a oh, oh it's you. <laughs> yeah. I've um just feel like I've been staring at the same four walls for too long now. Yeah. A bit of cabin fever today. I had to go out and and get get something to get some lunch. Mm. I had to trip out and get get on my bike and get a sandwich. Okay. Because I don't really, sometimes I'm, I'm in and I don't really realise. Um, oh my! I haven't actually seen been outdoors today. Mm-hmm. I think that was Monday or one of the days this week. <laughs> I, and I and I suddenly realised the evening came and I was really irritable with the kids. Mm-hmm. And um, I thought I know what that is. I need to go out and I just went out for a walk. I just and it was like seven o'clock, pitch dark, and I just had to go out get some fresh air. It's yeah. amazing how much that has an effect on me. Lockdown 2.0. Yeah, here we are. So it's not really an improvement on lockdown one then? Do well, you? I was... It is It's different. It doesn't feel... You know, on paper, it's not... It's a much softer lockdown than lockdown one, isn't it? Yeah, it's just basically no pubs and restaurants, isn't it, really? Yeah. And um, so as far as work and as far as um, day-to-day life... We're not restricted on going out. We're not we're not necessarily um, time bound on how long we can spend outdoors. But we just we're just not seeing. It's more of a social lockdown. Not mm. we're just not seeing anyone. So that's a bit of a shame. But now I think it's just I'm a bit a bit a bit bored of it all now. Yeah, a bit bored of it all. Yeah, and and you're not drinking either. Is that well? It's a lunchtime, so yeah. For the benefit of the tape, it's it's just gone half past twelve. We seem here, to have snapped. We're both drinking. Oh, got... um, Kerry, Kerry, Kerry. Who's 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 Kerry? Cherry, <laughs> Cherry uh, Cola. If you're watching, then you can see what brand. Um, yeah, other other brands are available. All brands are available, uh, providing mm. you can get to a shop. It would be nice to have a little bit of sponsorship from that. If we name drop, are we no, are we likely to get sponsorship? No, probably not. No, no, no. Um, no. Let's leave that. The, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so welcome everybody. This is uh, what we must be on one hundred and five, hundred and six, something like that episode. This will be one hundred and six. One hundred and six. There we go. Okay, and we're back in our sheds and houses because. Pubs are shut again. Boo hoo! I think that's pretty much standard. I um, I haven't canvassed the whole of my uh, a global response to this, but I had one lady on a course this week from Portugal, and um, they have a similar constraint on lockdown. A kind of uh, quite uh, probably a bit more firm than ours, really. Um, not allowed to. There's curfews on the streets. Okay. So beyond uh, eleven o'clock at night, I think it is. They have to. You have to be at home. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know that's not the case here. Well, as far as I'm aware, that's not the case here. Yeah. <clears throat> my my son asked me, is America in, in lockdown too as well? And I said, I'm pretty sure they didn't even have a first lockdown. <laughs> to be honest, I really shouldn't, don't think they did. Um, but yeah. the So what is a lockdown? Wrong answers only. You get you see this wrong answers only thing. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't like I don't. it either. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't. I don't. I don't really know why I don't like it. But I don't like. There was it. one. There was one, wasn't there, about what? What's a retrospective yes. wrong answers only? Yeah, I saw that. I didn't respond. No. I don't know what. Yeah, is it? Is it just a bit of fun, or is it trying to? Is it a, trying to poke fun? I don't know. I don't know. I think it is meant to be a little bit of fun, isn't it? But it it could be one of those where. And there's no real um, target that could be uh, sort of negatively impacted, I suppose, in that context. Yeah, um, we just feel it's just waiting for someone to jump onto a an answer and uh, you know and, and take it even further. I think it. So yeah, I, I, I suppose for me, I think if I'm really analysing myself here, I think it's because I'm not a fan of anti patterns. Mm-hmm. So you know when someone goes to a conference and say this is this is where it's this is where you're going to go wrong or this is these are all failure patterns or these are all you know, wrong examples. 
and that's quite it's quite easy to point out failures um but it's not very easy to it's 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 harder to offer constructive suggestions than it is to offer ways of it going wrong mm. um and so yeah i think that's where that comes from it, it's it's another opportunity to come up with all the things that are wrong with something without offering anything constructive yeah I, I, it's um it just seems like sometimes it's easier to spot the um you know to you know, to, to rip an idea apart and to explore everything that's wrong and, and we've been known to make use of that right so yeah you can flip but, that around and try and, and do the opposite yeah so sometimes it's it's if someone's not I don't know. It's, it could be. I could. I'm trying to think positive now. It could be. It could be a good way f- to get people's concerns or frustrations out into the open in a you know slightly tongue in cheek way. Many a true word spoken in jest, as they say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and then you could uh, you could go about starting to try and act on some of that stuff, improve some of that stuff. I suppose that's a positive. Yeah. But uh, for me, I. I the easiest way to avoid failure is not to try. Mm-hmm. And and if we're trying to avoid failure, if that's the thing, trying to avoid anti-patterns or doing things wrong, um, I don't know, it's not really not really encouraging safety in a way, is it? Because well, people are looking at that and thinking, oh, there's lots of ways that people could rip apart a retrospective. Mm. Maybe I'm overthinking it. Yeah, maybe. You said something interesting the day, and again we can edit this Unlikely. out if you do, if you eh? Unlikely. You um feel I've just because you're talking about Twitter, and we can edit this out if you um we can loop around this and talk about something else. But you put a tweet out which resonated with at least one person, which said, <laughs> "I feel less intelligent now, or something like that, yeah. than I did twelve two years ago, or something like that, wasn't it?" Yeah, you, yeah, I, yeah. I feel dumber now than I did twelve months ago, and. I reckon twelve months ago, I I, I was more um, intelligent than I was no, less intelligent than I was two years ago. So I think over the last two years, I've been gradually getting more and more stupid. What made you say that? What made you, what brought that on? Well, I, I can't remember what instigated it, but I think it's um, it's a combination of the fact that my memory, my long term memory, is getting worse. Um, so trying to recall things is harder Mm. and I just don't think I've been learning as much so I haven't been replacing that lost knowledge with new knowledge so my view is that I'm I'm not as clever as I was I don't have as much knowledge as I was I think I still have the same mental aptitude the capacity for knowledge because I can work things out I just don't have as much information in my head to recall and the ability to recall it is, is mm. what I was. And I, I've been at home a lot yeah uh, as have most people uh, and with uh spending most of my day because my, my two elder kids are at school a lot but my youngest isn't so I'm spending a lot of my time with someone who can't talk properly mm. and who is saying wow were we for, <laughs> for um pretty much anything that he can't have a word for it's wow are we so i have to kind of interpret that um so i think i've been you know maybe dragged down to his conversational level maybe <laughs> playing with his toys watching his tv programs uh, so that was where that worry came from i think you know i like these kinds of conversations you know i i learn from talking to you I, I, when nigel comes on he, he spends yeah. a lot of time just consuming wikipedia doesn't he so <laughs> you, you'll pick up just bits of knowledge uh, bits of information and you just haven't as much opportunity for things like that so I think I'm a little bit dumber than I was I think there is just less like you say less opportunity you have to be more deliberate like like say go just being outdoors and walking through um going into a, a company speaking to different people you're just picking up lots of different it might not be knowledge but it's just experiences I suppose yeah. and and stories isn't it and um yeah, it has to be much more deliberate these days. And yeah, you can we can order all the books um, and read um, books off, you know, off, off order them on Amazon. Or but I'm not. I'm not. That's it. I'm not. We well, used to. I know. Used to I know. Be a... And I've got another book. I've got a couple of books here that I have ordered. I just haven't read them. 
I, I even because I haven't even been reading fiction, which I love, but that's often I do that when I'm on holiday. And I, is that I, a dry? Yeah. So the 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 because the environment hasn't. So yeah, for me at home now, and I was thinking about this just today, is that I don't have many switch off moments at home because everything is at home. Mm -hmm. Work is, and this, other people have said this to me, it's very hard to compartmentalize the work now because everyone's working at home. My days are a lot longer and the day is amazing. So drifts into the evening. So I was the other night, um, it was 9.30 and I think I was sitting and, and Sabrina watched, t turned on a TV program that I obviously didn't want to watch. And then instead of just doing something else, picking up a book or a newspaper, I went and did. I, I went and did some more work. I thought, well, what, what, why on earth would I do that? I went and switched my, you know, this machine back on, and I did something else. And it's just, I think that can't be healthy. That's, I should try and find something else to do. And I think it's just symptomatic of being around work all the time. And it's, um, it is hard for me to, to distance myself from it. Hmm. Do you feel? Just as clever as you were a year ago. More no, clever? I think I think some of it's an age thing. Um, I think um, but we're not I, that old. I mean, you're older than me. But. <laughs> I've got grey hair. Just look at my uh, reflection now in this in this camera. Um, I've got grey hair, but it's, <laughs> I went I went to a theme park, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we went on a couple of roller coasters. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I thought I like a roller coaster. I'm trying to, you know, to show kids that my kids that level of excitement that, yeah, it's going to be great. We went on the same roller coaster twice, and I felt I felt queasy. I thought that's not me. <laughs> and then someone else said it. Well, you're getting old. And they said Do these. I said really? Does that happen to you when you get old? You start getting sick on roller coasters. They said, oh yeah, yeah, it's an age thing. So now that's like a little earworm in my head, thinking, well, it must be my age, and. Um, See, I don't, I don't buy that. I think it's a, a a practice thing. I think your body is out of practice with it. Yeah, maybe you used to box a lot more. Yeah, I don't know. But I'm, I'm more aware of my own mortality now. I've got more. I think we talked about this before. It's a bit deep, but I've got more riding on um, me now. But I've got two kids to to feed and to yeah. Yeah, to look after. So. I suppose I feel more um, vulnerable in that respect mm -hmm. that uh, pe more people depending on me. Um, but I, I went to, seeing about being appearing intelligent. I did my first lockdown um, lo lockdown two dot zero quiz last night. Okay, so it's yeah. Really General knowledge. Or... So we do the six of us, six uh, five of the other lads from from rugby, and um, we all pick a ten questions each. You know, whatever we want, really. Mm -hmm. Six rounds, hour and a half or so. And um, I was dreadful. Really? Yeah. So, and I just felt, whether it was, you know, because as, as you'll know, Jeff, I do like a quiz. You do. And um, We've I won like quizzes. Quiz. <laughs> yeah. But um, I just felt it, uh, the, 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 round, the topics that they chose weren't particularly great for me. But there was one on American geography, mm -hmm. and, I, I, and I sucked at that. There was one on politics, and like, pictures of politicians and I got naught out of 10. I didn't recognize any of them. So they really that, obscure. Yeah. So they were kind of yeah, loose connections to politics and um, I'm not good on politics anyway, but yeah, and that, that made me feel dim. I thought, well, quite okay, I am just kind of retreating into my shell now. I'm only looking at one aspect of, of general knowledge. So did you do significantly worse than your friends? Um, struggling significantly worse than I would normally do. Yeah, but I just, I, yeah, I had, I just felt like, oh, I don't know that. There was, I, I was conscious of stuff. I don't know that either. I don't know that. It's not like I used to know it. It's just that I didn't know it. Mm. So, um, yeah, I, I feel a little bit more, a little bit more um, sheltered okay. than, I, than I used to. Well, I decided I'd try and do something about it. Okay. Rather than just worry and or ignore it, so I bought myself a, a book of cryptic crosswords. Okay, and I'm working my way through them. So it's it's uh, it's quite difficult. I'm not really a, never really done them before, um, and 
it's just it's a new skill i suppose uh, as well so the first one sort of explains you know, the different types of clues mm. uh, and you know, the sort of ways of solving things and breaks you in a bit gently uh, and that, you know I, I, I from only being able to get the anagrams work out which ones are anagrams and then be able to do the anagrams always been quite good at anagrams um to so then maybe getting you know four out of 30 to one the other day where i got 28 out of 30 without without looking so that that that's an improvement i feel that that makes me feel better yeah i was that's the something that i was doing in, in lockdown one was a crossword and perhaps i should get back into that but um, again, you, you were competing against your family weren't you yeah so but that doesn't seem to have happened this time around because again i think my family are probably, perhaps are just a bit pissed off with the whole lockdown thing now but um maybe i should you know brain you know exercise my brain my son nine years old had um his spelling test which he got 10 out of 10 on mm. hat, hat off but the, at nine years old i was shocked his he was expected to be able to spell what was the word it was it was judicial nice and there was a few i, I mean it later transpired that all the words ended with C I A L, mm-hmm. so like beneficial, um, yeah, that type of thing, judicial. But yeah, I, was, I thought, wow. And there's words that, and he was expected to spell at the age of nine. That, and again, that probably made me feel a bit stupid as well. I mean, I could spell it, but it was still oh, crikey. I had to, you know, <laughs> a nine-year-old can do that, you know, off the top of their head. Yeah, that's good. That's good. But you, yeah, you find it a little bit easier to learn when you're younger, don't you? But I think just getting back into the habit of of consciously trying to learn something new, it's it just start soaking up information again. It's an enjoyable thing, isn't it? You know, when you learn something new, it's just perhaps it doesn't come as easily as it used to, and you have to search it out. Because um, you've been learning a new skill, you've been doing some fishing, haven't you? True, true. Is that you feel you're learning that you're you're better at it than you were? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, every time I go, I, I, I hopefully learn something new. Um, and if I'm with somebody that's more experienced, that's more likely. Mm. Um, but every also, I'll get a bit of trial and error. I'll try some try some different things. But um, yeah, it's, it's sort of learn one thing, one small thing in a day. Yeah. Rather than um, learn a I don't know, learn a, ten new words type thing. Yeah. But yeah, no, is there hmm, is there a link? Is there a link? Learn. I suppose it's harder for for teams to learn off each other if they're remote, um, and if morale's going down. It's, it's, I don't know. You got I, for me. I've, I I learn more when I'm in a positive mood. Hmm. Well, I so think I guess it's kind of a vicious circle. Well, it's kind of it's always been how you and I both teach, isn't it? Very much. Um exercise based teaching which is to, mm-hmm. which has been stretched to to them to the to the other extreme with being online is that my course originally my look, look at my scrum master course as, a, as an example pretty much was 80 percent exercises i think um mm-hmm. so you've had to adapt and it's I, I personally i think it's harder for me to to learn without you know, without you know more of my body involved, you know, my hands are you're getting practical application of stuff and and learning through doing something. Um, I think um, that's academically that's been stretched for me because I just got, you know, just got to read and uh, and absorb from the internet, which for me yeah. is great. No, then well we've we've not not necessarily consciously, but um, we've sort of aligned ourselves to. A Confucian principle from Confucius. Mm-hmm. That the, the famous quote by Confucius: "Tell me, and I will forget. Show me, and I might under, uh, Show me, and I might remember. Uh, involve me, and I will well, understand. Is it understand? Yeah, yeah that's it. So <clears throat> that that one, I think we we tend to yeah play along along to yeah, and I think that's um that's a good way for me to learn. I. I I know people that will will watch YouTube videos and just sort of internalize it, and mm. I really struggle with that. I, I actually need to do something, and and for someone to be able to tell me this is what's working and what isn't working, or, or work it out myself, for it to really stick. Yeah. But yeah, teams, 
they're not they haven't got as much opportunity for that osmotic communication that we used to we used to have at bt we're, we were sitting around each other in other places that we've been mm-hmm. you just pick stuff up don't you um uh but that that conscious pairing or triads that kind of thing is is a great way of learning new things sharing new knowledge taking on new ideas new items from the backlog mm-hmm. experimenting you haven't got the opportunity for your brain back or as much easy opportunity for your brain bag sessions at lunch or, you know, your, co- your conversation in, in the corridors at conferences. Yeah. It's, uh, as you used to. Yeah. Well, the pace, yeah. Yeah, the pace is artificially high. So it gets hard to slow that learning down. And that's why I think a lot of, we do a lot more coursework which is the coursework element obviously has lend itself, lend itself well to remote training that we do. And it's very hard for me to, I'm still running two day classes with a bit of follow up one-to-one um, coaching, but it's quite hard for people to learn at the same pace online as they would do in person. I think that's just, just from what, what this lockdown has showed. Mm-hmm. Um, people get more tired and, people's capacity for learning is probably restricted. Yeah. So what's your prediction? Nothing to do with Agile, but what's your prediction on... Um, so we have a vaccine. Okay. A, a vaccine. I think there are um, a number of vaccines. No, I know, but we have one that's at the front of our of the headlines, mm. making the headlines. Um. And already people, I was chatting to my friends last night and they're already talking about, oh, well, I'm going to book a holiday now for, for Easter. Okay. It's all going to get better now. And that, and there's, you know, there's a, there's a, a glimmer of hope. The mm-hmm. door is, the door is uh, slightly open, slightly ajar, but is it going to make a massive change? you think to how we work by, you know, by spring, maybe next year, do you think how you work? No, no. I think it will I think it will make a massive impact on society but not immediately. No. Um just from a rollout perspective and I imagine there's got to be a, a, a certain amount of well there has there will be there will be uh, I'm I'm almost certain there will be an element of inspecting and adapting and iterating around this because um there's still a lot of unanswered questions and it's just the first version right. Mm-hmm. Um so they will find improvements over time um and it may well it may well give you as this they don't know yet do they how much how much coverage going to give you whether it's going to stop you from spreading it or, or what have you so no i think the the most important thing for this from my perspective the most important aspect here is is to use your word hope it's, it's the hope that it's giving the world that it's beatable mm-hmm. science science can do this and um quite relatively quickly yeah so you know society has proved that most of the people can do most of the right things most of the time yeah to limit impact yeah science has proven that with enough focus they can be incredibly clever incredibly quickly Uh, so yeah no matter if this does offer limited coverage or limited um what's the word immunity then the next version will be even better they will they're taking an agile approach in many ways so there's this virus i don't know what they would call uh, this vaccine sorry that they would i'm not sure what they call it where it's come from but there are so many out there being tested this this parallel multiple parallel experiments there's yeah. a one that's shown favor and uh, they'll probably all try different things um so it, it seems like a very agile response in many ways yeah and obviously they'll only going to uh, immunize certain demographics first obviously the most vulnerable will, will right, be they should prioritize way. yeah there, there will be an agile rollout yep. based on priority we'd be at the bottom of that product backlog right now jeff well, absolutely and we should yeah as we should i agree yeah. i agree um but uh, i'm sure there'll be many people that would be pushing for for an artificially high place on the backlog list so that you get a holiday <laughs> uh, all stakeholders have their reasons mm-hmm. 
Uh, and it's going to take some some pretty. Hopefully, it doesn't look like there's going to be a limited supply. I suppose that would that would be a that would be a bit of a social cultural disaster, wouldn't it? If there was a limited supply, so you know there would I don't know a, a hypothetical scenario. If there is only X amount of resource that's required to make the vaccine, so mm. you couldn't make enough for seven billion people. Yeah, um, then that would that would cause all sorts of problems, but. Yeah, that that prioritization factor, and that is a that is a factor in prioritizing any backlog, right? If you if you if you know that you haven't got enough time or capacity or money to deliver everything on the product backlog, then prioritization isn't just about when for people; it's sometimes a question of if. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, and people are, in my experience, a lot more tolerant of later than they are of no. Yeah, than of never. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder. It's all going to influence behaviour, right? It's a fascinating time to be alive. Mm. But like you said, there's there's more. They're talk. Well, again, I, um, we were talking last night about this, but I think maybe some more news is is only just slightly behind this vaccine. So the other one that's that's kind of leading the charge is this Oxford vaccine. So um, there's potentially, which is a different type of vaccine. Mm-hmm. So I think it, it works in different ways and it's got slightly different logistics in terms of how it would be administered and and less less constraints, which might make it more available to more people. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, it's um, like you said, it's a, a truly, and I talk about this a lot now in my courses about the whole, the nature of vaccination, the, the vaccine programs and the government response around experimentation. They're all all these lockdowns, all these um, circuit breaks, all these constraints, rule of six, they're all experiments that, you know, mm-hmm. that um, governments are trying to run to try and learn as quickly as they can about what drops cases and, and drops that R rate back down. So they have, um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a truly a complex problem in itself, which is quite a nice, because people ask me all the time, now, Give me an ex- can Scrum work in a non-software uh, environment? And I'm saying, well, yeah. Let's, let's let's talk about that. Let's talk about that in the current state. Hmm. I suppose one of the limiting factors is uh, the length of the feedback loop, right? So you, it takes quite a while for experiments to actually yeah. uh, bear fruit yeah. or know if, if they're working. So can we accelerate those 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 learning that learning uh, yeah. those feedback loops? Because um, there was always a, a lag, wasn't there, between the R rate and infections and experiments and the R rate and so on. So the different local experiments, different tiers and things, I think that was a good opportunity for multiple parallel experiments. Yeah. Fascinating. What else is going on in the agile world? Where are we? It's coming up to, well, so at the moment I'm, I'm due to be talking in South Africa in February. Yeah. And we, the conference organizers and I, we had a, we had a chat, we had an agreement that, you know, ideally this would be in person, but if not, then we'll, we'll, we'll do a virtual online thing. Uh, and we wouldn't make any commitments or decisions until nearer the time because it just wouldn't make any sense. So we're keeping an eye on it. Uh, no flights have been booked yet. Um, where was I going with this? I don't know. You're talking about what's going on in the agile world. And then you talked about South Africa. See, this is this is a sign of me getting dumber. I've even forgotten what I was talking about in the middle of talking about it. You drifted. <laughs> um. Oh, balls! But it is harder to focus when you're not, you know, when you're staring at a screen or a camera. This will come back to you in a minute, but it's, it, I found this when I when presenting at conferences or user groups. You just feel less part of it. You feel less in, in, engaged in it because mm. you're not. Oh, I know what it was. <laughs> Told you. So travel. <laughs> right. Yeah. So at the moment, we are in the UK and many other countries. Uh, we're not allowed to travel. Can't go on holiday. Mm-hmm. But I could travel for business still. Yes. yes. So I could still get on a flight now, mm-hmm. go to South Africa, give my talk mm-hmm. and come back. Mm-hmm. There are quarantine issues with that, mm-hmm. but the fact that I can still travel for work when I can't travel for um, 
for pleasure is a little odd mm. for me. What do you mean odd? Well, I don't think that work is essential. No. Uh, I would say a holiday is more essential for me than <laughs> work yeah. right now. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah. But yeah, no, I don't, I don't really, that, that, that conference is unknown and trying to keep your options open is, is a challenge when there's a huge amount of uncertainty. We don't want to close off options, but equally keeping your options open can be expensive. Mm. Uh, So in order for organizations, in order for teams to be as agile as possible, one thing, one skill they need to develop, but it's not something that we generally um, have consciously trained. We haven't really, uh, is options, keeping options open. Mm. Uh, we've, we've talked a lot about options in terms of creativity, in terms of engagement, in terms of um, you know, getting better results from meetings and self-organizing teams. But we haven't really talked about it in terms of um, agility as such, I don't think. Have you? Not well. I talk a little bit about, you know, wait until the last critical moment to to decide on doing mm-hmm. something. But yeah, that might not be multi options. It might not be um, have multiple threads in place. It's just waiting for as, as long as possible before you book that flight or before you. Um, but I suppose it's it's more expensive, like you say, to prepare. In the in the in this conference example, do they run both in parallel? Do they prepare for a program that is face to face, but also invest in tooling and and um, capability to run it remotely? Because obviously that's going to incur a cost because you can't do that at the last minute too much because you want to test that you've got the capability to do it. Yeah. So there is, like you say, there is a cost to running mo- multiple things in parallel for a, for a period of time wonder if I've missed the last responsible moment. Because once most countries in the world went into lockdown, I imagine the price of flights went really down. Mm. Um, but as soon as the news of the vaccine came out, flight prices probably started going back up again. Mm. So if I'd have booked a flight when prices were at their lowest and didn't need to use it, then I'd be wasting less money. Mm. If I did need to use it, I would have spent less money. Mm. Um Maybe I've maybe I've missed that last responsible moment. I don't know. Hmm. I, rem- I remember a, a while back. Um, I say I, I the conference. Yeah, <laughs> I uh, made a mistake of booking a flight too early. Yes. Do you remember this? Yes. Um, yeah. Well, I booked. Small... A... No, 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 no. This this was something a work thing years back. Oh, okay. I booked a flight on on the basis of cheapness it was i think it was a cheap Mm. deal or something like that but um i booked it on the hope i think it was before i'd had an answer as to whether my talk had been submitted so there was a a big risk on whether my registration would have been paid yeah attendance would have been paid so it could have cost me a lot more money now luckily i did have my um paper um accepted but it wasn't too early well it would. It wow. It was it too. It wasn't too early. I felt the stress that I experienced at the time would have suggested it was too early. Okay. So the the stress. You didn't need stress about it. Well, that. So I don't. We, 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 hmm. One thing that I've been uh, working with some some people on recently is separating the decision from the outcome. Mm-hmm. So just because it turned out that your paper was accepted and you got the price at a cheap rate doesn't necessarily as a positive outcome but doesn't necessarily mean it was a good decision no and equally if your paper hadn't been accepted it doesn't mean that it was a bad decision mm. the quality of the decision is not dependent on the outcome mm. it's important for gamblers to know this yeah um, and effectively when you're looking at options theory it is an element of gambling mm. So you're trying to hedge your bets, right? You're trying to, to, to play the risk and probability against the loss and, and the gain. Um, so 
the variable that you just talked about there, the stress that you got. Yeah. Now that, that was something that was within your control. Mm -hmm. You didn't need to experience that stress. No. Not simply because of the outcome, but because the stress isn't going to affect the outcome. No, exactly. So it's kind of pointless. Yeah. Yeah, If it is a bad outcome, then worry about it. Yeah. Rather than worry about it before. That's true. Because that was wasted stress. Mm. Um, So then the question is how how can you avoid that unnecessary stress? And part of it is rationalizing that the outcome isn't dependent upon or the quality of the outcome isn't dependent upon the stress and it doesn't necessarily negative outcome doesn't mean it's a bad decision. Also some of the fear setting stuff that we would have done in the past around, well, what am I assuming people are going to think of me if it does happen? What And, and so on. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a ramble there, but that, that, that's, that, that, came through my filter of recent experiences something very very relevant are you better at dealing with that kind of stress now as a result or yeah are you, yeah are you still a worrier yeah no i i still am a worrier but um i suppose i've, I've learned from that is that i can afford to wait so it's, it's interesting because generally in general terms i'm a procrastinator mm. so it's quite unusual for me to decide something early so it must have been a really good deal yeah, for you to do that. Yeah. I think it was purely based on the price of the flight. It was instinctive, I think. And if you rationalize that, you say, oh, normally I'm a procrastinator, so this must be a really good deal for me to do this. Mm. Therefore, I'm justified in doing this. Mm. Um, whereas I'm kind of the opposite. In that I prefer to get all that admin stuff out of the way as soon as possible so I don't have to worry about it or worry about forgetting about it. Um, so is it with that in mind then back to full circle is this waiting game that you're playing with south africa is that are you fighting with that internally well i think if it was if it was me that was paying for it yes <laughs> <laughs> i would be yeah um but no it's not so uh yeah i don't really have a huge amount of exposure there mm it's not really as much my issue but it's a little bit more out of your control if you're not if you're not booking it if you're not does that make it easier for you to deal with if you if it's more out of your control or would you prefer to have oh yeah yeah. because because i don't have the negative downside okay so i i I don't i hate wasting money Mm. so um yeah it it would it would it would sort of bug me Mm. i'd be thinking uh can i do this is it covered by insurance i'd be thinking of all those kinds of things i'm a bit bit um uptight about that kind of stuff but once i've made the decision mm. i can kind of let it go mm. so I, I'd, I'd rather worry about it make the decision mm. knowing that it was the best decision i could make mm. and then if it turns out to be unfavorable say no, it was the best decision i could make i bought myself by making that decision well early mm. not perfectly mm. i bought myself peace of mind yeah i get that Maybe that's the economist in me, mm. my accounting degree. Mm. I wasn't all about the numbers. I liked, I liked, we used to do cost benefit analysis and it wasn't just about the financial cost. You know, there was social cost, there was environmental cost, there was psychological cost, all sorts of different things. And I quite liked that. Yeah. That was the bit of the accountancy that I liked. The only bit. Wasn't much of it. Wasn't much of it. <laughs> I could never understand exchange rates and interest rates and things like that. It must be part of that, even though you, you didn't enjoy it, there's probably part of that, you know, that you've benefited from that, that, um, that background that's, that's stood you in better stead as a entrepreneur stroke, you know, businessman, whatever you want to, however you want to. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Especially when, you know, I'm coaching product owners and things. Yeah. Um, and being a product owner, that, that helps. Because I am, as well as being a bit of a procrastinator, I, it kind of goes in with it, I suppose, a bit impulsive, a bit impatient. Yeah. Um, my wife would say, a bit. <laughs> she, she right now. But uh, yeah, that, that being able to look through um, both a financial and non-financial cost lens yeah. helps temper some of that to a degree. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, this this doesn't feel 
this kind of all the way back to the start, this lockdown doesn't feel as constraining as before, but it is playing on my boredom thing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're bored. Um, I'm bored. I, I, I get bored. And very... I think it's because, because this is the second version. So I don't know if you remember how you felt when the first, the first um, week of the first lockdown came in. I was excited. I think. Yeah. That, I was just going to say that in our house, there was this feeling of, Oh, it's different. Oh, it's new. It's going to be, it's going to challenge us in different ways to think of being creative and to think of being exciting. And now I think the first week has been, Oh God, you remember the last week of the last lockdown rather than, you know, rather than being a a new and an, uh, an unknown thing. So that's, I think already, and we've been told so many things about how particularly around mental health and how important mental health is. And I'm very much aware of that now. And I said before, like, you know, I needed to get out and get some fresh air. I'm, a, I'm more aware of that now that I need outdoor time and, and just time away from the screen. And I even found myself telling people I was teaching this week, get away from the screen during these breaks, get take an hour for lunch, get away from the screen, get away from the screen. So I think that's, I'm more aware of that now. And that's probably um, bringing me down a bit, I think, if anything. The, the, yeah. I feel the need to, to spend more time away from it. My wife has a very different view of that. Mm. Um, so she, it's not that she doesn't um, buy into mental health. It's that the constant messaging of you may have mental health problems. There are lots of mental health issues out there in, in her world is she worries that that actually makes people think, Oh, maybe I, maybe I should have mental health problems right now because everybody's talking about it Yeah, and where you would actually have just got on with things and not really not stressed about it. Um, it's sort of created a problem if you like. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can, I can absolutely see that point. Um, but I think given it's, it's stigma for, for many, it's, it's more important to be talking about it than uh, at the risk of potentially making someone aware of a condition they might have not encountered. Mm. Yeah. If that makes sense. Don't know the words made sense, but hopefully the sentiment made sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, the, the, I think we've been lucky from a weather perspective, but the darkness is definitely an issue. Yeah. Right? It's, it, darkness is always a, it's always linked to lower mood anyway. I remember when, when one week I was working up sort of northern half of Norway uh, and teaching during the day. So I didn't see, and it was inside with no windows. I didn't see, literally didn't see sun mm-hmm. for a week. Mm. Um, now some of that was within my control. I could have gone outside at lunch during break yeah, uh, and for whatever reason chose not to, but not seeing the sun for a whole week had a, had a massive impact on me. I didn't realize it at the time, but it did. Mm. Um, that that's, we've got, we've got the opportunity to, to yeah. break things. Bit. And I heard so, on the radio the other day, there's some campaign, isn't there? Um, that's gone global now in terms of trying to, something called, it's called light up something i can't think of what it's called but it's basically campaigning to try and um with the with the obviously the days getting shorter i think there's a campaign in this country certainly to print to, for people to put their christmas lights up earlier oh yeah, yeah yeah so to try and increase light levels and to you know to try and if people generally get a, a lift from christmas anyway they do we, we actually talked about that in our household mm. Um, and we've decided not to. And the mm. reason we decided not to is because we didn't want the the positive feeling to have worn off by the time oh, Christmas, Christmas actually comes around. Yeah. If that makes sense. Because mm. you can kind of, just as you can tolerate pain for, if you've got a, a consistent level of pain for a period of time, it can, it can feel like it's wearing off because you sort of normalize to it. Yeah, if you have a consistent level of joy for a period of time, it's sort of you become numb to it as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we we may well put them up slightly earlier than normal. When would but, normal be for you, your house? Uh, so normally we would get Christmas decorations out of the loft on the first of December, right? Uh, and we would try and get a tree that first weekend. Okay. That would be normal. How about you? Uh, last year it was the first of December, which is earlier than previous years. My, I mean, my my um, my parents always used to be very strict. Two weeks before, two weeks after Christmas okay. was um, 
you know when things would go up but we're a bit more um you know the kids are quite a bit more exp- excitable and they want well if they had their way we'd be doing it tomorrow i think but um <laughs> but i do so the hope is as well obviously if you put it up earlier then hopefully this lockdown might end a bit uh, before christmas you know we don't know that yet it might be extended but the, the plan is for the third of december second is it well it, it runs to the second i don't know whether that means the second is locked down i think, free, it, or I the, think third the, the first day. day the first free day is thursday the third i think um so the hope is but by then obviously if they relax some of those constraints and maybe go back to the tier-based system that we'd be able to go out and enjoy the de- december with some of our friends you know and whatever that might be but you know that, that might bring a different sense of uh joy rather than just mm-hmm. christmas lights so we'll we'll see yeah all right well we'll um we'll see yeah we'll we'll crack on hopefully well, let's let's see what what's what next episode's going to be like yeah no doubt we'll still be here in our sheds um this time next week so we'll, we'll do it again be open all day, so yeah maybe we'll have we'll have something a little bit more uh exciting than diet soda <laughs> yes diet soda yes for our american colleagues i'm not i'm not i'm not branding <laughs> here. the fact is that i've been holding it up on the camera people will have seen it if they've seen the uh, seen the video version true true all right mate well look after yourself yeah and each other <laughs>